we debuted the XVX loudspeaker in this room. And we had the couch there. And uh, before I did the presentation or started, um, Elizabeth, my wife, came in and I uh, was going through the tracks, reviewing with them, and all of which she's heard a million times in our household. And uh, she's listening by the top of onto the third track. She leans over to me and says, Honey, you've got to get these. <laughs> what? You've got to get these. Really? I, I know you. <laughs> I know you. You will never be happy <laughs> to be happy. Yeah. You've got to figure out a way to get them. which that was the green light, and I now have them in my home. And they arrived uh, just before the curtain or, you know, crashed on COVID, and uh, it, helped. it helped us get through, because I couldn't travel, I couldn't do anything except listen to a great deal of music and start on projects involving my own recordings and uh, MQA files on the XC. You know, it was, it was a wonderful experience for me to be able to spend all that time reviewing music that I'd been involved in for 20 or 30 years, a lot of things that I hadn't listened to that I'd made many, many years ago, and hearing them in an entirely new way. and Which leads us to where I want to start with all of this. And this does, in fact, what's going on in this room, started with the XVX. And uh, much of what came into the XVX was the development of new technology that Daryl had been working with. Uh, I suspect one of the biggest improvements in this loudspeaker is the same thing that was in the Alexia V that many of you heard the last time we were here, and also in the Alex V, and started with the XVX, which was the Quadramag uh, mid-range driver. And it's a driver that uh, would and could have should have been in the WAM, but we didn't get time to finish it because of Dave's impending illness, and, and it, it got to the point where Dave took the WAM as far as he could with the tools and technology that he had at the time. But that driver was magically completed by Daryl and the team at Wilson Audio. And that's a major, major device that we're using. We're very proud of that driver. And um, as I say, it made its debut in the XVX. Then it found its way into the Alex V, which um, in my highly biased opinion, remains the biggest bang for the buck at high-end expensive loudspeakers on the market today by a wide margin. You've got to spend, well, in my view, you've got to go all the way up to the price of an XVX to beat it if you can. But then uh, that migrated into the Alexia V, and now it's in the Watt Puppy original speaker, and now what we call the Sasha V. And the V in Sasha does not stand for five, it stands for the V material, which is the same material that we develop in the, elect, in the XVX, Alex V, Alexia V, et cetera. So there is a consistency of development that can be traced through the whole DNA of all of, all of our products. And it's, and it's something wonderful and marvelous that Daryl has maintained this kind of the same process. There are some new innovations in the V Sasha that don't exist, however, yet in any of our other speakers. And uh, where, where is the other? Uh, it's no big deal, but it does make a sonic difference. Uh, the white cap is the, our own in-house made cap. And uh, we've been making all our own caps now for about two or three years. And um, one of the big advantages of is that we're... Um, we're building our caps now to about 1%, one-tenth of 1% tolerance. Typically, capacitors are down to 3 to 5 to 10%. And the way to get them into the tolerance that we wanted, we'd have to bundle them, put a whole bunch of little bypass around them so that you'd get them all down to the percentage that you'd measure. And uh, now we can actually make them to that. And that means then you don't have all of these stems which can act on the quality of the signal. So now we just have this at 0.1%. However, we've developed yet something that goes beyond it, and this is a copper wound cap. This is new technology, and we now have the machine that enables us to do this. And all of this, we, we've been doing it in-house, but this is making its debut for the first time in this loudspeaker. 
And um, we've OEM'd a few of these to a different, I, I won't mention the brands, but some electronic companies that have used it. And they've gone gaga over what the sound quality is with this capacitor in their photo stages and in, also in their preamp stages. And of course, we're using a higher version of it in the, in the crossover uh, of this loudspeaker. That's one innovation that's in it. Um, forgive me for jumping around, but I'm just going to cover because uh, I think you get a sense. I was asked by Steve, you know, what, where does this stand in the succession? So I'll back up a little bit. There was, of course, the Watt. Then there was the Watt Puppy, and the combination of the Watt and the Puppy made its debut in 1987, if I'm not mistaken. The Watt came out mid-80s, and then the Puppy followed a few years later. Then uh, we went through a whole series. Of, there was never a Watt Puppy 4. There was a Watt Puppy 3. Watt Puppy 4 didn't exist because in certain parts of the world, that's not a good number. So it's death in the Orient. So that. Not a good idea. Um, then uh, we had the Watt Puppy 7, the Watt Puppy 8. Then uh, we jumped to a thing called the Watt Puppy Sasha. And the reason we came up with the name Sasha was that at the same time we introduced a speaker called the Alexandria. And Sasha is the term of endearment for anybody named Alexandria. That's the official title. However, Sasha was also the name of Dave's dog that died that year. So... We would dedicate a speaker to Sasha. Then there was a Sasha too. And then Dave passed. And uh, Daryl named the speaker that's currently has been in production now almost six years. The Sasha, uh, the current Sasha DAW. Then the DAW stands for David A. Wilson, which uh, Daryl named in honor of his father. And uh, now this speaker represents the newest version of of what was originally considered a Watt puppy. And over the years, it's grown, it's, it's, it's taken on a whole nother level of dimension and size and so forth. And it remains as it always has been now, a three-way loudspeaker with the new technology of the mid-range. Plus we have the same tweeter technology that we developed in the Alex V, the Alexia V, and what we call the carbon tweeter. It's essentially the same soft dome tweeter Slightly different motor mechanism, but what is really critical is how we deal with the back wave on the tweeter. We've developed this in-house computer printed carbon fiber device that we put on the back that has this whole labyrinth which deals with the back energy of the tweeter in a rather unique way. And uh, by handling better what comes out, the back energy results in a better sound of what comes out of the front of the tweeter. So that's where we stand with the tweeter. It's the same tweeter similar to what's in the Alex V and the Alexia V. Um, and as I mentioned, the crossover now features the newer capacitors that we had heretofore have never had a chance to use because they didn't exist. Then the term V, what does that mean? Well, it's our new V material that we've been working with. The entire top plate of the woofer under this, there's two spikes here, then there's a movable and adjustable spike for time alignment, that back spike. All three of those points rest on a V plate, which is ideally suited for dampening all of the resonant modes that come through this entire enclosure before they get to this enclosure. So it isolates very effectively everything that's going on up here from what goes on here. Then on the bottom of the woofer, we have another V plate. And we also have the V feet, or what we call the acoustic diodes. And interestingly, the uh, DAW uh, finished its retail price at around, what is it, Chris? The current retail is around 40, 42.9. And this speaker will be retailing, is retailing for uh, 48.9. So it's a significant increase, but the feet that are on the bottom, that was a $3,200 accessory for the older model. They're included in these. So just the feet alone that we've added offsets the price increase by half, along with all of the other innovations. The adjustment in the time domain is even more substantial that goes on in this, uh, more flexibility in the positioning of the upper module relative to the woofer to get even more closer tolerances in the time domain capability. There are various and sundry other things. The woofer enclosure is about 
an inch and a quarter deeper front to back. Daryl did not want to make it any wider because already, you know, it, 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 the, the front, the profile, the width is what you see when you're sitting in front of it. And we didn't want it to be any more obtrusive than what it already has morphed into over the years. So uh, that remains identical. The two woofer drivers remain identical to what we've been using and uh, they're driven in parallel. So it remains essentially a three-way loudspeaker with a single pair of uh, inputs. As has been the, woofer, uh, the Wilson tradition, you cannot buy wire, cannot buy amp, you, because David's feeling, and Daryl carries this forward, is that if you design a crossover really properly, there are no real benefits to be obtained by, by wiring. We've always maintained that. In fact, there could be some issues that could be created by, by, by that's our philosophy. And, Subject to debate, I, I suppose, but that's always been our, our philosophy. Um, in addition to that, we have, again, more colors, more options, and we have pearl finish. All of our premium colors can be applied to this loudspeaker. Um, this is, uh, Elliot, what did you order? This is a Estorel blue. blue, is that correct? Yeah. It was deep metal flake. It's frankly quite stunning in, in this room. Uh, I invite you all when we're done to take a good look at it. it, it you can almost dive into the paint. It, it, it's so deep. Um, so before I start making noise with it, are there any questions that might that people might have about it? Um, sure. Peter, the, the, you mentioned the woofer cabinet depth. Is the, um, the mid-range cabinet also been adjusted to fit, or is it the same as it was in the DAW? The mid-range cabinet is different, slightly, slightly different. Also, on the front spikes of the top module, there's two slots where you get a little bit more precision where you can slot it in the front or in the back, depending on the room and listening distance and the ear height. So it's a little bit more flexible than what we had. And if you look at the back of the profile of the upper module, it has a continuous curve on it where before it was sort of angular. Um, that's a, a cosmetic thing that Daryl felt. Also, the, the cutout on the top extends further to give a little bit more ventilation between the energy that might be stored under the two modules, uh, between the two modules for a little bit more evacuation. Uh, we joke to give you a better hand grip on moving them, you know, but uh, nonetheless, uh, and I don't, actually you could pick it, pick the speaker up by that if you're strong enough. Um, How much does it weigh? I think it's um, a little bit more than I do. About 187 pounds, I think. Okay. Yeah, not much more. So yeah, I think that, I have to check the spec on that, but uh, they're, they're, they're pretty heavy. And, um, uh, the efficiency remains roughly the same as what it was. The uh, and that's no mean feat because that uh, driver, uh, the mid-range driver, is a challenge to get it to integrate properly, uh, synergistically, as Dave uh, Darrell would put it, with the other drivers. Um, and the port remains the same. The oh, the, I, I should mention that the sidewalls of the woofer enclosure are approximately half an inch thicker internally. And also, we developed a new methodology in here that was developed in the Alex V and in the Alexia V is that inside, there's a whole machining technology where we create these uh, uh, scallops, which break up the standing waves inside, which was not in the DAW because we didn't have that technology then. In addition to that, in the DAW, the woofer enclosure does use cross braces, which are high density, not MDF, but RO grade. The, all of the bracing inside of this is made out of our proprietary X material. So that the resonant control of this uh, is, is similar to that of what would be in the Alex V, in the Alexia, and in the XVX. They're all now of the same uh, caliber of, of damping and control. So those are, there are a lot of little things, but they all add up to something pretty significant. And the net result is the speaker I hope to show you. I don't, I mean, when, when we compared it, I wasn't there, honestly, but my colleagues were, and they compared a mono one, mono this to the mono DAW. And they said that uh, the term that Trent used was, is that the 
they obliterated the DAW, which is a great loudspeaker. It just, in every respect, he said it's just more transient, more, more transparent, went a little bit deeper, and uh, was just simply, as he put it, much closer to its upper brothers. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks. And now back to the show. Sure. You've, you've seen a lot of, well, not this one because it's new, but the DAW and the earlier ones in different rooms. Mm -hmm. um, but do you ever have them set up further into the room, like four or five Oh, feet? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, very typically. And, okay. and we could have done that here, but Chris and I made a decision. We found a zone of neutrality, which is frankly, if you move it an eighth of an inch, even a, or a quarter of an inch, either further apart or front to back from where they are right now, the sound changes rather radically. That does not say that we couldn't get something really beautiful out here if we chose to. But this is New York. And one of the things that we wanted to show is, is that the speaker could basically, as close as it is to this wall, make the wall behind it vanish. And that's a big deal, you know, because we all have this audiophile expectation that it's got to be out a certain distance in order to create the three-dimensionality or the rule of thirds or whatever methodology. But, but through the Wilson Audio speaker placement thing, you can find, you know, you can find what we refer to as various zones of neutrality. And as it happened from previous experience, as I recall, we had the, uh, the Alexia V pretty close. The, the Alexia Vs were actually, the, the front plane of the Alexia Vs were actually about an uh, inch and a half or two inches That's it. In, closer into the room. Closer, these are that but much further back. But also like an inch or two uh, further back. Wider, yeah. right. Oh, and by the way, uh, as many of you were here when I introduced that loudspeaker, we're running and we wanted to keep it the same. We have essentially uh, a slightly improved version of the DCS. We're using the same preamp and the same power amp and the same cabling as what you experienced the last time to try to keep the variables uh, different. Uh, so what, I, I don't know how much you'd rely on your oral memory of that experience, but uh, as I recall, see if you liked what you heard the last time. Uh, Peter, yes, I know you need to welcome visitors here. Did you try this speaker in one of the smaller rooms? I did not. Did you, Chris? Not yet. Not we, we will be doing that uh, as soon as we receive them. We open these up in here and have them breaking in for a week. Uh, or, well, yeah, it's been just a hair over a week. Um, so we've only been voicing them in here, sure. obviously, after the event. Uh, mm -hmm. And get some people in. We'll play it in the other rooms, too. Yeah. Well, one of the things we do, I want to mention one thing. These rooms are all sized because of the building being held up by the structure. We're actually outside of the building. We're in the, a vault of the building. And that's the sidewalk curve that goes down another two stories. But the girder that's holding up there, we emulated the bump there. So the speakers, this room isn't very wide. And we also get great results. And the Wilson speakers in general, because of their adjustability, allow the things that other speakers wouldn't succeed to do. So this is about the size of a one bedroom apartment's living room. Sure. Yeah. Typical size. And it does have a higher ceiling than most one bedrooms would have. Normally these speakers would be in room five. That's our name for it. That's, that's where they'll live after. That's after where most of the demos the are. And we move things around a lot. So normally the XVXs are in here. Or the, or, or the Alex Vs or whatever. Or the Alex Vs. Yeah. The other room where they could exist is that room, which we still need to do some acoustical work in. We've been very gradually doing acoustical things. We want to minimize the acoustical things we do in general because we don't want to make it weird. And and <coughs> we, you know, we're always moving these things and setting them up by appointment. 
And these would normally be defaulted into the room where the Sabrina X's are, which is a square with an eight foot ceiling. And more to what you're saying is that uh, experiencing these speakers should be a truly moving experience. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And Sorry. we're physically fit as a result of all the <laughs> Exactly. And Chris came, found something where we can not take the spikes off and the rest about three months before they start to collapse on each other. Yeah. Instead of taking and putting the wheels on that are normally with them and moving them. So, you know, we physically move things around. And the other thing that happened with the, with the, with the pandemic is we were only open by appointment. And it's not that we're only open by appointment. We come in spontaneously. This building has 12 floors of like kitchen appliances and mm -hmm. cabinet companies. You know, it's a, like a place for the home decor thing for the East Coast, actually. So we get people coming in here that way. But, you know, there's always something set up in each room and we can play something immediately. And then quite often we have a second or third appointment with somebody and we take our time and we set them up in rooms that are like the ones they have. Or, or, and with components similar to what the oh, realm yeah. of their interest would be, which is, but, which is but important. For here, we made a decision the other day, let's keep everything the same as we always have it, yeah. which is probably more expensive equipment than we might use with these. Yeah, it's, it's likely way over consistent. the top, but relative to what most people would buy this loudspeaker would be, but especially I from a loudspeaker, if, if they got that kind of money, they should be buying our more expensive speakers. <laughs> 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 I, I actually had a thought about this. I was thinking about our decision about this, and the reality is a lot of customers in New York can afford this system. Mm -hmm. They don't have the space for it. And therefore, the speaker is the and, appropriate and thing. And so this is, and I think you guys will hear today, these aren't the XVX, but they're pretty damn good. <laughs> and so if if you have the budget to afford a system like this, but you only have the space for a pair of sashes, I, 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 I don't have an apartment nearly large enough for an XVX. But I'm seriously contemplating getting a pair of these because you'll hear in a moment. They're, they're fantastic. Yeah, they, so we're gilding the lily, as it were. So to well, the I'll give you another example. The Sabrina X, a lot of people can't tolerate the speaker that's bigger than that. And I had a customer come in a few months ago, a guy named Brian, that Chris and I collaborated with. And he, 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 it was the first stereo he really ever had. And we originally proposed some name separate components to him and he felt it was just more than he should spend. He could afford it, but so he came back the other day and I said to him, look, you buy the Nova with the Sabrinas, which is underpowered for the Sabrinas. He's loved it. And we were talking about how we could make an upgrade because he's now motivated about it. He uses it a lot. He's got a three-year-old daughter who dances like crazy with the sound and he's, you know. So I did a comparison of the Nova to separate components from name he heard the difference in like two songs. So that's an example where somebody might keep going beyond the normal formula of how much you'd spend because the speaker can't be bigger, but he could keep going. Now he wants to come back and hear the next level again because he'll hear the difference and he might say it's worth it to him. I won't know that he'll know it if it is. Which is really the nature of high end in many ways. It's, yeah. it's all about experiential and, and uh, understanding that you can actually hear the difference. You don't have to be a You can hear it with the tune tots too. Yeah. You can yeah. put better and better stuff on tune tots and keep hearing more and more refinement than it would be disproportionate to some kind of formula that you think would be normal. <clears throat> you know, Peter, I don't like you talking trash about the DIWs. I told you you couldn't have them back. I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. when we were here I love for, them. When yeah. we were here for the Alexia launch, Chris explained that the alignment of the upper units was for this chair here. Yeah. It's the same thing true for the, the same same is true, yeah. although probably not as critical because it's not as tall. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit simpler. Um, but it is true. It is fully optimized. And that's why I'm gonna advocate is is that people move around mm -hmm. that we can in, engage in some variant of musical chairs. And, and actually so, I'll comment on that because I was surprised at the uh, monograph that they include of the chart of configurations for a 30 inch 38 inch ear height, which is about the same for both of these chairs, and also the uh, Aeron chairs if you have them all the way down at the bottom. Um, the spike setting for the upper module is the same from the 12 foot listening position where Mikey's sitting all the way back to 16 feet, which is about where Matt's sitting. Uh, so aside from toe in, 
Yeah. The time the alignment is off. correct. Yeah. Obviously, the towing will be different. Yeah. Um, but and, and the room be what it is, the tonality of the room shifts. It, it, the reason that chair is there is because this is the, the best spot in terms of the room inherently. So I hope all of you have a chance. Uh, and Mikey being of shape, he can... I'll move. I'll move soon. <laughs> okay. That's the chair I take my naps in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but should we encourage Mikey to, to sit up in his seat? Is yeah, he should probably <laughs> sit up. <laughs> Straight down, fly right. Okay. Give him a booster chair. There you go. So a little we'll bit about what I'm going to do. Oh, as I can I change I said, that review. I said the electronics we know. I'm gonna, the music is sourced from the hard drive on this computer. And some things that I'll be streaming. I'm, I'm hooked up to the internet. I'm using a player system called Audirvana, which I happen to love. I mean, it, Rune is great, and I use it, and I love it as well. But there's something about the way I can organize things in Audirvana that allows me to find what I want to play. I won't play full tracks. I'll just, this is sort of like uh, uh, what, what Susan would be doing out there with hors d'oeuvres. You know, I'm just giving you a little taste of, of various things to give you an idea that we can cover a lot of musical ground. I also have a tendency to play things too loud. Please don't hesitate to tell me to turn it down. I will not be insulted. But I'm not Jason. There you go. <laughs> you could use whatever language you choose to tell me to turn it down. Anyway, um, so uh, I'll start off, though, with something pretty loud. I'll start off with a bit of a bang. This is a recording that I made of uh, the fanfare for the common man, James Judd, Florida Philharmonic, 1992. So it's an old file uh, converted to uh, MQA. Do, do you consider these broken in at this point, Peter? I would say that they're a good 80%. Okay. Maybe. According to uh, Daryl, the five first hours are the most critical. And Chris will confirm that because you weren't sure that, you know, you... Meant the, you meant the B first hours. The first five hours, yeah. The but, first five hours are amazingly different. When I what first plugged these in... And listen to them fresh out of the box. I called Peter and said, I think these might be broken. <laughs> and I came back at, at the end of the day before I left, and they had completely opened up. So yeah, he said, they called me back, say, not to worry. They're okay. <laughs> and, and since I got here yesterday and to where they are at this point, there's an audible uh, significant. I'd say we're at a, maybe 25 hours on them at this point. So, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. They've been breaking it now for 130 Oh, okay. So you've been hours. letting them play. I, I, th these have been playing nonstop, uh, aside okay. from when we've been talking. Okay. Uh, these have basically been playing nonstop <laughs> since last Thursday. Right. Oh, cool. Then, then what you hear is what you get. How's right. that? Okay. So, all right. So let me start with this. Okay. 